Arteta promoted to manager, a convincing win over Fulham, and then... We only went and done the business. We've got him. The main man has finally signed. Aubameyang's legacy is only just beginning. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm in for Kelly this week. Mr Wright's had a busy week with Arsenal's... Well, sometimes a re-signing is bigger than a signing, isn't it? Is that the way it feels for Arsenal this week? Yeah, that's as important a signing as we'll ever make um, in the current climate. You know, we needed to make that. You know, we're really pleased that he's um, he's, he's committed himself to to the club because we, we need that guy, without a doubt. Because there's been a lot of good work over the summer, uh, Melissa, and obviously winning the Community Shield and winning the FA Cup. But it feels like if they hadn't got Aubameyang to re-sign, it would have actually put Arsenal back a couple of stages, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was the only question mark around the club. You felt from Mikel Arteta's appointment that there was a definite direction. You could see improvements on the pitch, um, even just the way Arsenal played without the ball. You could tell uh, there were a lot of advancements and a lot of positivity. And yet you looked at the team and... Aubameyang is the reference point. He is their gold dust. Uh, you can tell how much the dressing room look up to him, how much they like him, and how he's so instrumental to the club and to everything they want to achieve. So him not signing that contract, even though everything felt so good, there was still that apprehension of, well, what happens if he does leave? Uh, that would have just knocked them back. So this is huge for them. Uh, I think it just completely galvanizes the club, adding to everything that's already been done. There's a lot of optimism around Arsenal, and I think it's rightly so. It says a lot about the manager as well, doesn't it, Tim? I mean, what a, what a nine months he's had so far. Very good. I thought he was bang average in the Premier League, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest, but he, he picked up a mess there, didn't he, from mm-hmm. Uno Emery? Um, and steadily you can see him building a philosophy, the way he wants to play getting the message across, introduction of uh, young players through their academy, excellent young players, um, and getting rid of some of the bad eggs. I mean, he's obviously dug out Glenn Doozy early doors at, after the incident at Brighton and said, I don't want anything to do with you. Get, the, get away from the, the rest of my squad because it feels like he, he may poison him, even though he's a very young man. Um, he didn't want him around. Ozil looks like there's no way back for him, so he's, he's strong. He makes his decision, he knows what he wants, but securing that man's future is massive. Um, I think Arsenal probably do himself a disservice. I don't think he would have gone to a bigger club than Arsenal. Not now, at this stage of his career. I know he's had a brilliant season. It's all about Aubameyang there at Arsenal. But Arsenal is a huge football club. And I'm not sure there's a bigger club out there for him. There would have been clubs who were interested in giving him more money, certainly in China and overseas. But... Where's he going to a bigger club in the Premier League? I don't think he is, not at his age. It's a great signing for Arsenal. OK, well, let's, uh, let's go to the Emirates then, when Ian caught up with the Arsenal captain after his deal. Let's go and have a cup of tea. All good interviews should end that way. Mm. He seems to actually have a lot of knowledge of Arsenal's history, general yeah. knowledge. Yeah, he does. Um, and there was a time where you, I was quite worried what he was going to do because you're kind of in contact, but you don't really want to be trying to pry because obviously I'm on this side of it. Um, but he was always very, um, he was very courteous towards me and what he was trying to do. And, and, you know, it was only last week, really last week, I knew that he probably might sign. But yeah, he, he knows a lot about the club. He supported the club when he was younger. It's like Melissa was mentioned that, um, you know, a lot of African players... Um, have got an affinity towards Arsenal. Whether they support Arsenal or not, they do have some kind of soft spot for Arsenal. So, yeah, in the end, that helped. But I think the main thing, what we saw there is the fact that he wants a legacy here. Yes, he could have probably tried to chase um, medals somewhere. Maybe the age might have been going against him a little bit, but I believe that he could be the foundation of something very big. Just like when we signed Dennis in 95, it was the, it was the foundation for us moving forward and we saw what we ended up achieving through Dennis, maybe we can do the same with Pierre being there because we need him there at the moment to help people through. And he obviously believes in what's going on. And you have to ask the question, if if Unai Emery had still been in charge, how much harder that would have been to pull off this signing? I think that's the entire reason he was actually thinking about his future, the state of the club last season, um, all the upheaval. Obviously, you know, as a player, you have to think, can I stick out another transitional period? Is it going to work? There was a a few important things he said there. Arteta's vision, the clarity of it, 
and the honesty of the work that they have to do, but that the club are willing to do. If a player can see the picture and the picture is painted for him, he can then commit to it. Mm. Other really important thing he said was that he was thinking about trophies, but he wants the legacy at Arsenal. And I actually interviewed Fernando Torres this week about his career. And he said to me, he grew up and, you know, it gets drilled into you as a player that you have to win trophies like that success in football. And he said the biggest lesson he learned was that trophies, the medals and the piece of silverware, yes, it's important to win and it's nice to get it in the moment. The biggest thing is your impact on clubs and on the people, whether it's fans, your relationship with players, managers, all that stuff cannot get taken away from you. Medals, you take away, you pack it, but those other things stick with you and stay with you. And he was talking about obviously leaving Liverpool because there was that weight on him that I have to win trophies now. Yeah. And he would have, I think he would have done things differently. He went on to win a lot at Chelsea, obviously didn't feel the same. Uh, but it's interesting that Aubameyang referenced that as well, because I think he'll look back on this decision and he would have regretted it if he left that. I think he'll be very happy with this in a few years. Yeah. But I wonder, though, it's interesting what you say that with Torres and trophies, how important winning the FA Cup was. Massive. Must have been, must have been Huge. surely to convince himself, oh, yes, we're going in the right direction mm. here. Oh, yes, this manager and, and his plans and his clarity is such yeah. that I believe in it. Yeah, not all, not all players... Uh, think the same way as Fernando Torres and uh, Tottenham fans are obviously be hoping that Harry Kane does yeah. um, yes. for that same reason because um, it doesn't have to win trophies just about personal accolades but um, for me I think it, it helps when you've got a trophy when you're winning you have them days when you're in the dressing room after the game there at Wembley when Arteta walks in ringing it they're ringing the trophy <laughs> carrying it in there then they win the community shield albeit and not a major trophy unless you're a Jose Mourinho side um, <laughs> it it's brilliant. It helps. It helps them get over the line. With Liverpool, they won the big one, didn't they? They won the Champions League and all of a sudden they had that belief and then it helped them. It helped. We know how close they come in the Premier League. They went the following year and they believed. They knew they knew how to get over the line and get the job done. That is really important. And this group of Arsenal players now know how to win, albeit the FA Cup. Can they go on and win the big one? It's a building process. They can't do it this season. But without... Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, they would have had absolutely no chance. I see him challenging for Europa League. I think there's a possibility of that. Because it's a domino effect, isn't it? Arsenal win the FA Cup, so the players think, all right, we've got a manager and his vision, we understand all this. Aubameyang scores the goals and he goes, right, I believe in this manager, I'm going to stay, right, we're making this signing. One thing leads to another, leads to another, doesn't it? Yeah, and when you listen to um, the... In, the when you listen to Willian speak about when he spoke to Mikel and what Mikel has got him there for, people complaining about the amount of time Willian got, you know. Of course, you can, you can say, well, three years might have been too much, but the fact is, he said, in the two years that you're there, I expect to be in the, in the, in the top four. Um, and everything what he's doing, the direction of the club, the intensity of what he's trying to do, um, I believe that Arsenal will be challenging for the top four. I think that when you see how Arsenal play against the top teams, it will come on to you. Arsenal can break now. And with the more defensive rigidity that they have and the way that the confidence in playing out from the back and then the potency of Aubameyang, hopefully more goals will come, more creativity will come from the midfield. Then, you know, they can beat the, the teams around them now because they're more organised. I couldn't say that under Unai because he didn't know what was coming. Under Mikel Arteta, we will beat a lot of the teams that you're supposed to beat and we'll challenge better against the top six. So I think that we're going to be in and around it without a doubt. They have to do it a different way, Arsenal, don't they? Which will be the really interesting challenge. The news this week, which I think everybody knew, that the owner hasn't put a single penny in, in the last five years. So any money they spend on, on transfers or on paying uh, Aubameyang, don't forget they're still paying Ozil over £300,000 a week to sit in the stand. All that has to be generated by sales or by commercial enterprise. That puts a lot of pressure, does it, to get A, the signings right, or the re-signings, and B, as Tim said, they've got good young players, but your coaching has to be absolutely spot on because Chelsea go, no, actually, we're going to do it this way. Yeah, yeah and We'll talk exactly. about Chelsea the next part. Uh, sustainable success for Arsenal, that's, or, or how to be successful sustainably. And that's why it is so important that they got a manager in who has a long-term vision, who is very into coaching, who wants to develop players, who has such a crystalline idea of everything he wants to achieve and the structure. If you see all the changes, 
I had covered Arsenal at the Emirates before Arteta took over, just before that period. I was there when Yunberg did his press conference saying the club have to make a decision because there's so much uncertainty and the club needs to have an identity moving forward yeah. that they can work towards. And I covered Arsenal when I took, uh, Arteta took charge and the difference I could see immediately. And I, the big thing I will always mention is Arsenal without the ball because we know Arsenal are, have always been an offensively brilliant team. Their weaknesses are when they don't have possession. But their commitment to tackles, to pressing, the desire to get the ball back, and to really get in their in the opposition phase uh, in the opposition's faces, that was the first thing I saw, which I was like, hmm, his message, and he's already changing. But then, over time, everything else that's happened, like I mentioned, the structure changing behind the scenes, you can see the profile of player, the fact that he can convince somebody like William to come. I know. Uh, you know, he's aging and stuff, but he's a very, very good player. And a lot of clubs would have wanted him because he has experience, he has tactical news, he has versatility in his game. Um, and also convincing Aboumiang to sign because that's... I know he is the reference point at Arsenal. He wouldn't have got what he has at Arsenal anywhere else, but it's still something to be able to... Co to convince a player with your vision because he also took over in my opinion the biggest mess of the top six yeah. one of the biggest messes in the league and honestly the amount of work he's already done to change things the psychology the perception the feeling that's all really really difficult and he's already done he's it, done. Well, would, it up, yeah. would the written press be talking like you're talking now about Mikel Arteta, if he didn't win the FA Cup. Yeah. And he finished so badly. You, you know, position in that league is the worst since 1994 or 95 season. It's fine margins in management. We know he's got over the line. He managed to win the FA Cup. Unai Emery took him to the Europa League Cup final. If they would have won that game, we know it's if, buts and maybes. If they would have won it, they would have took him to the Champions League qualification. Then everyone had been singing from the rooftops about Unai Emery. That one would game have, went against Tim, him. No, Tim, no, no, it would that, have unraveled. It yeah. would have unraveled. Uh, uh, there's there's a big that, difference. You know, we were talking about winning trophies. Okay, most journalists probably would. I'm not a scoreline journalist. I understand processes and I look for wider signs. Winning a trophy, in my opinion, is not a measurement of success. It, it, it depends what it is. A Premier League, you've been great over a season. That's consistency. Champions League, you're playing the best teams. I didn't actually put much stock in that FA Cup, the, the actual winning of the FA Cup. What I took from the FA Cup run was how clever Arsenal were tactically, how their game management had improved. But beyond just taking away the FA Cup, I'd written a piece, actually. I think my, my preview piece for their, their semi-final was about how he's changed the culture of the club. Because like we've mentioned, getting very tough with players who don't train at their optimum, uh, you know, being very public about what he expects from his players discipline-wise and stuff. That hadn't been the case at Arsenal for a very All long time. All the non-negotiables, as he yeah. talked about. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it's interesting that El Nenny's come back into the team as yeah. on loan last season, and when interviewed after the Fulham game, he actually highlighted straight away, and it's much easier to ask somebody who's been away for a season and come back into it, what's the difference necessarily than someone who's yeah, been inside. Yeah, but when you... I hear what Tim, Tim's saying, but when you see the progress that Arsenal's, Arsenal have made, and you can hear what Melissa's saying they're pointing all the, the differences, like San, like Sanyehi leaving, that, those kind of decisions, good decisions for the board upstairs, V9 now taking charge, um, um, Mikel himself now being the manager. All yeah. these things have happened. I think that even if we'd lost that, Tim, even if we'd lost um, against Chelsea, he played well for about half an hour in that game, but and then Arsenal done what they've done, they broke on and beat him. The fact is, it would still not take away all the progression mm -hmm. up to this point. And of course, you only need to win seven, eight games or whatever it is to win a cup. But what we're going to see now from Arsenal with what he's instilled now, with all the stuff that um, Melissa's saying, the, the, the culture, the intensity, the discipline, we are going to see an Arsenal team that are improving and continue to improve. Are we going to be able to challenge Liverpool and Manchester City because of where they are? 
you know, we're going to be able to have a, have a go with them. It's going to depend on the intensity of the team when they play against them. As a coach, you coach a lot of young players yeah. you got in the Tottenham team. How excited are you for Arteta and how good do you think he is that he has got, and, and a lot of them are, are English, which is great if you're an England fan, young English players there to coach and to mould, like Saka, like Maitland-Niles, like Nelson, who've already got into the first team on occasion. It's really good for them boys because now they, they feel like it's a level playing field and, and we've got a manager now who... who Picks his team based on how they perform during the week in, in training. Um, not on reputations, not on price tags. It's about who's delivering. And all of a sudden, your, your squad becomes bigger. You know, and you don't have to keep dipping into the transfer market and spending 10, 20, 30 million pounds on average footballers. Go out and get the players if they're going to make a difference. And not only to make a difference on the pitch, but the culture. And Willian, for me, is a great sign in, in that regard because he helps out the younger players. The younger players have just got to look at Willian every single day and how he applies himself on that, on that training. You don't play for a length of time at the top level like Willian has. And Aubameyang as well. Keeping him there is huge because Martinelli now, has, he's got someone there. He's got a reference. He's got someone to look at and see how he works on the training field. And I'm sure Pierre and I'm sure um, William will take the boys aside. And if they want extra training, if they need developing, if he just needs, if it's not on a training pitch, if it's just a word in their ear in the canteen or the restaurant after training, they're going to help. The young kids can only be as good as your experienced players. And I think now they've got a nice blend. So same with that. Louise and Gabrielle at the back. Louise, Louise, everyone's critical yeah. of mm. Louise. Everyone. Now, when I went to the training ground with Mikel, he was talking to me more about David Louise than any player there, about what a professional is and how he situates them now in the dressing room next to the young boys. So him there, mm. another player who got criticised, and rightly so for the way he reacted when he ripped off the armband there, Xhaka. Yeah. Xhaka is another one of his references. He sits in there, Abamyang there, uh, sorry, um, Louise there, is it? William now, yeah. David Louise, <laughs> and he puts the young boys in and around them to learn how to behave, to be a top level footballer for a period of time. It's really interesting, isn't it? You know, that, that's where the, you realise how many jobs there are as a manager now. Yeah, and this you know, is... You've got, to be a sort of, you've got to be a sort of counselor as well and a, and a yeah. psychotherapist. And he obviously, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, he obviously <laughs> is up for that. And that's why yeah. when they announced that he was the manager, I was quite pleased to, to, to see that. But you I'm like really... that change of title? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do, because... What's that all about, right? Yeah, I mean, well, they I, said I an know. upgrade to manager. Yeah, yeah I mean. but the, an upgrade to manager because I think that what was going on with Sanyehi and the, the Black Book and the... It's just not Arsenal's way of doing things. With everything that Arsenal have and the, the money that is spent on the database, the recruitment, everything what we're doing is the way to do it. You're doing it properly, not just some guy phoning and hopefully bringing someone in because he knows someone. his contacts. No, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you can't be an Ars a team, a club like Arsenal are, like the club that we are, and are depending on that. So that had to move on. You bring the manager in who wants to manage, and now, especially with the David Luiz, I'm so pleased you mentioned David Luiz, simply because our, you know, when they s spoke about how much they re-signed him for, because how can they re-sign him? And he made a couple of mistakes and stuff like that. But it was so good of Mikel to, to re-sign him and not even entertain anything what people are saying because he knows his value in the dressing room. He knows his value in the dressing room.